This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Welcome to, um, well, this edition of Vast Wasteland, and, well, once again, it's the, the potpourri, potpourri edition, and this time we are doing Toys Part 2. But if you're counting. First, I guess, before we get in here and talk about all these wonderful things that you see before us here, I guess we'd better tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV Cable 21. And there's an address in case you want to write a complaint about those times or anything else. <laughs> it's Vast Wasteland, Post Office Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. So, write, please. We're begging you. We can read. Because <laughs> we want to hear what you've got to say. So. So. <laughs> Well, now let's hear what we've got to say. We're going to talk about toys here. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, first off, before we, before we start talking about the toys that I've got here, I just wanted to show you something. What have you got to show us? The last time we talked about toys, we talked about um, the oh, first Barbie. Some Barbies, yeah. And the first Ken. Well, here we have the first Barbie and the first Ken. What a hunk. What a stud. Notice how muscular Ken is. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. And what a doll that Barbie is with those wonderful glasses and that cool, cool purse for the beach. Okay. Well, she's always been able to make a fashion statement, but... Uh, and high heels on the beach. I always thought that was... It's so chic. That was quite a statement. Trey, chic. And then Barbie is, of course, the first punk rocker. She's got these, uh, these earrings that just plug right into her head there. <laughs> Well, that or you took, um, you know, those fancy sewing pins that had the big colored um, the balls in ball on the end, and yeah. you just stuck those into Barbie's head. But now I suppose you could do it to Ken, too. Yeah. 
so that Ken, he's such a hunk. No wonder yeah. she dated G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Which just leads us into um, what we're going to talk about here. Well, one of the things I'm going to talk about at least, the G.I. Joe phenomenon. Um, the life of times, see. the history, the loves of G.I. Joe. G.I. A Joe. real American hero. Yeah. <laughs> G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, fighting man from head to toe on the land, on the sea, in the air. Somewhere, okay, back in 1965, G.I. Joe made his first, um, well, no, he didn't. In 64, he actually made his first appearance. And they had a Joe for um, each of the, each of the um, branches of the military. Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force. <laughs> and so they pretty much, I mean, Joe was all pretty much the standard, the same standard guy. He, um, whether he had dark hair, light hair, which was all he had where he first started off, he just, well, they had black hair, they had blonde hair, and I, they might have had brown hair, but I don't think they really did. <laughs> and he always had this um, scar on the side of his face that they never really explained. It was just kind of there. Because he was a tough and macho dude. Tough and macho dudes have a scar. Well, whatever. It was just this scar. All the Joes had the scar. They never explained it. And it was there. It was like the trademark. Now, now so that I didn't understand, G.I. Joe was in the Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force? No, it wasn't always the same Joe. It was different Joes. <laughs> but basically the same guy. They were, they were all just fighting Joe. men. Well, see, the whole G.I. Joe thing is just the idea of he's anonymous. And uh, it's, it's something that's pretty well, much... for um, someone anonymous, he had a lot of commercials. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he had a lot of commercials, but he, he was pretty much just an anonymous fighting guy. They all had dog tags in the original ones. <laughs> yeah. And when you got into the G.I. Joe club, you got your own dog tag. Ooh, ah. <laughs> and I bet you wore it proudly. Oh, yeah, I wore it to school and had a good old time. And, well, I mean, after a while, though, one thing about Joe was he, he had these little funny hands that could only hold maybe one thing, two things. He just kind of arthritic here. <laughs> and it, was, it really didn't make for a good, a good doll. Well, didn't he just have, like, hands that could just hold a gun, basically? Yeah, a gun and... A gun, a knife, a weapon. Yeah. He could almost get his hand, his finger through that, through the hole there. This is a wonderful spear well, gun. Wasn't that came this with like one, one of the first dolls, well, besides Barbie, that just you could just buy all kinds of ridiculous things for, like, like the doll could have his own house and furnish it. <laughs> Basically, you. After a while, they did start making a house for Joe. Um, let the me see Joe here. The Joe house. <laughs> yes, a lot of some of the accessories. They, they never had a USO, Joe, did they? <laughs> um, well, actually, after a while, they, they did. did. They just, they just and had. They kind of branched into other nationalities, too. After a while, they did. They um, stayed on with them. Uh, yeah, because I know on our opening shot, if you look real closely, I think that's a Japanese G.I. Joe. Yeah. Or Oriental G.I. Joe, however they labeled him. The Oriental Joe, well, the Japanese Joe was okay. actually the... Uh, so they came out with British, Russian, French, Australian, and Japanese Joes for the, the whole international spectrum there. And then they got into this Joe um, action team thing, which was kind of a precursor of the, the Joes they came out with in the 70s. Where, um, well, Joe, well, after he got hair, and we got like real fuzz. fuzz hair. Oh, and they had those ones with the beards too. Yeah, well, that's what this one over here has. These the Desert Joe, and he's out here looking for King Tut or somebody, because he's out here in a <laughs> no war to fight. Had to do some and a six wheeler thing, and he's out here and he's digging up a mummy. The only bad thing about these um, Adventure Team Joe things was, well, the Joe was okay. The equipment they had was okay. The things that they were going out to find were always. Oh, maybe a third of their size. So it just wasn't really realistic. It's like, yeah. well, you've got him. He's going out and he's trying to find this mummy, or he's being attacked by this great white shark here. 
There's great white. This great white hot dog shark here. <laughs> or who here? The eight ropes of danger, which are going to stop him from Ooh. finding the big treasure. <laughs> or how about this great man-eating alligator here? <laughs> Looks yeah. like he ate small men. Well, this Joe, well, he just, uh, I just didn't really do a good job with the uh, the scale on the the things that he was either going to find. He also had a gorilla that's like maybe this big or something, it's supposed to beat him up or something. Just didn't well, really. Maybe they were small but mighty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they had reputations, you see. No, the I reputation guess they must have had something. Preceded the eight ropes of death here. Well, I mean, they they just played it up real big. They got this whole this whole treasure chest deal and a ooh a map. A map to go out and New France, Europe, beware of the eight ropes of danger. New India. This is a weird map. Well, it's a it's an ancient map. You oh. to try to find these these doubloons and things here that are in this treasure chest. But here's here's what you're going up against. This darn little octopus here. That's just, the eight ropes of death. That's the eight ropes of danger. death. Danger. Well. Excuse me, death, danger, it's all the same to me. Well, it was all the same to him, too, and it just didn't really work, so Joe just kind of fizzled out there after a while. He went into space and everything. They had a, yeah. had a space Joe, and he just, well, the whole, the whole idea just kind of fizzled out with um, the, the less than popular Vietnam experience. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's kind of weird that G.I. Joe was popular, was a popular toy, considering the, the Vietnam War was going on, and we never saw, like, Hippie Joe. Well, that's how come he, he started doing the adventure team things because the war just wasn't as popular. So then they had to come out with other dolls. Oh, were these kind of like same time dolls? Um, yeah, because, um, well, James Bond kind of got to be popular there in the mid 60s also. Well, he had lots of movies going for him. Well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. So they decided to. I mean, the adults had the books to read, and they could go to the movies. The kids couldn't necessarily always go to the movies because um, they were kind of, uh, they were more geared toward adults. So yeah. they had to come up with something. They came up with the James Bond doll. And it was um, fashion to look like Sean Connery. <laughs> this is the Sean Connery Bond? Yeah. Well, this was before, their, this, this was the only Bond that was available at the time. Did they ever make a Roger Moore Bond? Um, if they did, I don't know about it. <laughs> well, now they make a James Bond Jr. Well, that's James Bond Jr., that's based on, comic, the, cart, on the cart cut. And, and, and comic, going right. back to like the Joes, the Joes came back in the 80s. Well, the 70s, actually, late 70s. And they came back about this big. Yeah, they were, they were just about a, a half of the size. But see, they figured that was a great marketing tool because they could make more Joes and you'd have to collect them all in order to get the whole great adventure going here for you. But and then G.I. Joe became like a, a covert, a covert, um... It's like they're two squads of mercenary guys going at each other because they don't have anything else to do for a living. Well, no, Joe, Joes are kind of defending the, the truth and justice, and then yeah. there's Cobra who are just out to rule the world. <laughs> and That's then an there's different goal. mercenary different mercenary groups that join in with either one from time to time so but um but that's I've, where the joes are now but now they've brought back the big joes and they've given them better hands they can hold things now they're not just these little arthritic cans they can they can do things they're they're much better and they come with them um, well like every toy that's out there now they come with sound things and machine gun noises and things like that but um they've brought back the big joes yeah. look for them they're just on special editions, and they're going to just leave fast. Right after Christmas, they'll be gone. Just like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like Joe has done his full circle. Anyway, this, uh, this James Bond doll, he was out there for a while. They had a James Bond doll. They also had an Odd Job doll. Odd Job was a character that appeared in the movie Goldfinger, and um, he was a big Oriental sumo wrestler size guy that... Was, the um, one with the hat that he could throw the hat and it would just whack off the statue. Yeah, the hat had a, had a, a metal band on it that could break necks or break anything that it kind of ran into. So That's they handy. they made they made a doll with the hat just just for fun there to throw at James Bond and James Bond could shoot him or something things like that. Also at that time they had um, Man from Uncle dolls, had Napoleon Solo and Elia Kuryakin. Had a Honey West doll, complete with Bruce the Ocelot. Well, of course. 
And so, um, and then they had several uniforms and things that you could get for them. Not that you'll necessarily be able to see them all, but well, there we are. Just giving you an idea. Just a general idea. Just the kind of an idea there. And then... There's more? There's one more. <laughs> By golly, out here in front, the little little George Bush guy. <laughs> Which is like we just realized tonight that this, this this guy looks like George Bush. But what's his name, Captain this Action? Was Captain Action. Captain Action, also known as George Bush. And right now he's doing his thing, saying, um, "Well, you did. I'm not. I'm not the. I'm not the president anymore. What's there left for me to do?" <laughs> well, George, you could be. Superman. Superman died today. <laughs> Oops, I guess or me and George are in the same boat. Aquaman. <laughs> or maybe, whoop, the, the Phantom. Phantom. Well, I guess it's Superman's dad. That's kind of. So, so. And then, then popular Batman. Yes, you could be Batman. You don't have to shoot yourself. You could be Batman. So yeah. basically, Captain Action had no life. He was just the great impersonator. Well, yeah, it was kind of after that, um, what was that, uh, well, anyway, he was, yeah, the great person. I can't remember what the name of the movie was, but anyway. Um, he had the uniforms. He had all kinds of utensils and things. He could just be anybody. He was just anybody. like a, a guy who flipped through the Sunday comics and decided he wanted to be everybody. <laughs> well, basically, and I guess he had a lot of money, and he could just make all these a things there. A lot of there. money helps. And then they, um, they made a... Um, an action boy who could be all the sidekicks. He could be Robin. He could be Superboy. Who else is there? They, he they, could be a dolphin. <laughs> they just came up with all these wonderful. Well, he was Aqualad. Yeah, he was Aqualad. Aqualad. Um, gosh, and he even had he had a dog with him that could be Crypto or whatever other dog characters there were. <laughs> and did they have somebody who could be Aunt Harriet, so that we don't have to suspect this relationship? They came out with an an, um, an action girl. Who could be Supergirl and Wonder Woman and I think she was what's 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 his name? His wife's Aquaman's wife, Mira. She could be Mira. This is Aquaman. Oh, Aquaman. <laughs> they never came out with a Hawkman suit for him, though. I wanted to see him go out with a Hawkman suit, but they never did that. Bummer. But anyway, Bummer. there there we are, and there's these dolls and wonderful things like that. The action dolls. The 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 twelve, the eleven and a half inch to twelve inch action figures that could that the boys could play with and not have to play with kin that their sisters had. <laughs> <laughs> they could bring in Batman and spies and things like that. Add some adventure to those action those twelve inch dolls there. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well I guess this time of the year since it's getting like toward the holiday season and all that. Um it reminds me of well, remember back a few years ago when every child had to have a Cabbage Patch doll, so, so like, stupid people stood in lines at Kmart at 6 o'clock in the morning so they could get that doll? You know, there's always a toy that's the demand toy. It's the toy that every kid has to have. Okay? Well, these were two of the demand toys that I remember from back, gosh, probably 1968, 7, 8. Yeah, the latter 60s. The latter 60s, whatever. I was alive, that's all I knew, okay. This is Tippy Toes. And she actually, well, let's see if she'll work. Yes, there she goes. She could ride her bike with that realistic baby motor noise. I don't know. But I mean, you just, you were nobody if you did not get this doll. She could also ride a little horse. And if you held a little hand, she walked. So it, it's like, you know, an action figure. <laughs> you just had to put batteries in it to get the action. And this was like the other doll that you had to have. Now, I actually got this one for my birthday. My birthday was near Christmas, so. This is Mrs. Beasley from Family Affair. <laughs> you got it, Mr. Beal, <laughs> Uncle French, whatever. It, this one actually talked, because Talking dolls were very popular, and I think they're just now starting to bring them back, sort of. And Mattel did them so well, too. Well, not so well, because, well, what's Mrs. Beasley now? 20, 30 years old? That's the most we can get out of well, her. Well, they, they worked for maybe a, a good five-year span. 
and then they, um, depending upon how much you used them. What are you saying? I used Mrs. Beasley? No, I mean how much you used the, uh, <laughs> the talking things because those, uh, what are those, those talking, well, what are those, those C and Says, they kind of have like a, maybe a three year span. Yeah, well they've totally changed those now. The, the pull string is becoming a thing of the past. Yeah, they, they just don't have very many pull strings though. But, but Mattel, Mattel was, was the company that made the pull string off. things. Yeah, pretty much, because they had the whole, well, the chatty Kathy, the charming chatty, the chatty babies. You've got the pictures in there, don't you? Well, I was looking here. The chatty, and I, just... I had charming chatty. She actually had records that went into her side. Uh, and then you pulled the string and she spoke foreign languages to that's you. That's scary. That was ingenious. It was fun. You could play games with her. I was an only child for a long time, so the talking dolls were absolutely wonderful. <laughs> you had somebody to play with. But these were like two of the hottest dolls. You had to have these dolls. If you don't have these dolls, you don't have a reason to live. Of course, so that, that, that darn Pamela dolls. Ferdin, she had an Effie Boots, which was just Mrs. Beasley in another dress. <laughs> well, they didn't market that one. I, I know. Remember. They never did market the Effie Boots, and I'm glad, too. I, <laughs> I've never figured out why this one was so popular. Because Mrs. Beasley on the show only talked to Buffy. And that was just in her ear. Yeah. And, uh... Oh, they've got Swingy there. Now, Swingy was one I did not get. She she, she go-go danced her. Okay, this is Swingy. Another Mattel toy. Dressed in her lovely, uh, dressed in her lovely, what do you call that, neon fashions there. Mod fashion. Mod, <laughs> neon, whatever. Well, she was cool, but I didn't get her. I guess I should have committed, threatened to commit suicide or something. <laughs> I don't know. That might have worked. <laughs> there are people that wish I would have. <laughs> but, uh, that, isn't that one of the chatty dolls? Um, this is Baby First Step. Oh, Baby First Step. Oh, that was one of those walking dolls. Well, she was a walking doll, also a Mattel doll. You know, I think she was ideal. Was she an ideal doll? I don't know. This is something neat. I don't know. Do they still, do they still put... It's like you can look on dolls' butts and see where they were from. This is a Mattel. Okay, she was a Mattel. 1967 <laughs> for this one here. I don't know. Do they still write on dolls' butts when they were made? On their foot or something. They're somewhere in there. Oh, here's boy, here's something that we also Barbie mentioned last time. Barbie had an time. interesting These tattoo on her butt. Wonderful big-headed kiddles. <laughs> they just thought all little kids should have a doll with a big head. So that's... Kittles. Because little kids have big heads. <laughs> it takes them a while to grow until kittles never do. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, there we are. Big-headed dolls. Now, I brought this old doll along. This one I called Susie. It, this, was, this was just your basic baby doll. And I think we went through this phase where we had talking dolls and dolls with batteries that walked and dolls that did all these fantastic things. And then, like, when the Cabbage Patch got popular, it was... A doll that didn't do nothing. It was just a simple just doll. Just like this. This doll did nothing. I carried her by her hair. You can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's like this doll probably came with a diaper. Is this is she one that's got the hole in her mouth? Yeah, she's got the hole in her yeah, mouth so for she, the bottle. Yes, wedding dolls were popular. Now, uh, potty also, train dolls are uh, popular. She also do the. She does the eye thing. Yeah, she does the <laughs> eye thing. Oh yeah mark of a quality doll. She could shut her eyes. One that can open and shut her eyes. Anytime you tilt their head back, their little eyes would close. But you know, dolls kind of went back to just being plain old baby dolls that didn't do anything. But then they got crazy with them with those now cabbage patches. Now they're getting patches. real they, crazy. They, they just do too many things now. They got, they got the potty dolls. What's, what's all that about? They've got dolls that, what, what's the, well, whatever one it is, the toilet makes noise. You set them on the toilet, there's like yellow water that appears. It's gross! And, and it makes little noises, like toilets. No, no, like the grossest one was the baby doll that you gave the bottle to, and it got a diaper rash. And then you had to clear up the diaper rash with this... Ointment. That's gross! <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's just pretend ointment, it's still, it's, it's just gross. the idea. Yeah. What's it's all gross. This? It's nasty. We don't need baby dolls that real. Yeah, little excremental dolls. <laughs> Oh, but you know, you remember um, Baby Alive, soft and sweet, she can drink, she can eat. Yeah. This, this doll's little mouth moved when you fed her. We found out she could smoke a cigarette. <laughs>
You can actually put a cigarette in baby Eli's mouth, light it, and, and there's something in the motion of her mouth or something. She'd be smoking the cigarette. It, it was a scream, but I guess I shouldn't tell kids to try that. Well, <laughs> Don't other, try it at home. I was professional. <laughs> there's, there's other dolls that do things like that. I mean, you can, you can just come up with amazing things for dolls to do. That's, that was kind of the fun of having <laughs> I mean, if you didn't have little brothers, little sisters, you, you could have dolls that could do these amazing things, and you wouldn't get in trouble for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a doll. Yeah, right. You can throw them on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was half the fun. <laughs> I thought that was all the fun. Well, I led a boring life. <laughs> <laughs> so... What else have we got? Well, that's, that's about it for this time. Um, next time, we'll go back. It'll be another... Oh, another, um, uh, we'll bring something in. Now, well, what's the next week? Is next week all three of us or just... Next it, week's all three of us again, right? Yes, it will be. Well, I can't keep track of these things. I'm such a busy person. It'll be all three of us, and we'll talk about another, um, another TV what's thing. Mark? And then, Mark, what are we talking about next time? <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about next time. Okay. Well, you're the organized one. We aren't. <laughs> it'll, it'll be another TV theme. Maybe, maybe it'll be cartoons. Who knows? It'll, it'll be fun, though. We'll, we'll, we, we always seem to have fun when we do it. <laughs> and then, um, by golly, after that, it'll be the next of the DC, the DC comic thing. You guys have a third part for DC? We have to do a third part of DC because we were just getting to the, the 60s, really. <laughs> All into the 70s? Six, late 60s, early 70s. We're just getting to that point. How interesting and then we've got a we we we're really probably going to be right in the middle of the big death of Superman thing, so we'll have to discuss that. I'm pretty sure once we do the next, because uh, you know that's going to happen, don't you? You know that's that's going on here. I mean, probably by the time you see this show, Superman, Superman will, will be, be dead. dead. Well, he actually died today, and then they're going to have what eight parts of funeral. Um. Well, that funeral is going to be pretty much a stretched out kind of thing. They're going to gotcha. like this show right now. <laughs> They're going to do the funeral. They're going to have shirts. It's just going to be just a, a big hullabaloo of death. <laughs> <laughs> we should all be so lucky. <laughs> yeah, by golly, I wish they could stretch my death out for eight episodes. Yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> oh, thanks. We'll make it to a mini-series. <laughs> a whole week. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so... um. Uh huh. That'll oh, be about it. getting all these <laughs> gestures. <laughs> oh, hey, I think that's something I've seen in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, anyway. Well, next time it'll be the three of us doing the TV thing again. We'll be talking about something Mark knows, but he won't tell us. He's keeping it a secret. Or maybe we'll just find out then. <laughs> like so we make sure do. to stay tuned. <laughs> so, that's it. Yep. We're wrapping it up. We're getting out of here, so, um,. From Vast Wasteland, the potpourri thing, we'll see ya!